It's long enough for both of us to be like, what is happening? Why are we fighting? Welcome to This Is Not Happening presents Fisticuffs. If you've never been to the show before, it's just a bunch of comics telling fun stories about real shit that happened. Give it up for Kurt Braunhol, everybody. Let him hear it. Give it up for our everybody. Keep it going. Okay. Hi. This is going to be a story about my first and last bar fight ever. I know you're looking at me, you're going, only one? <laughs> Tough guy like you? I realize I look like a, like a camp counselor for a, for a camp that only teaches feelings. Uh, but, I, but I did get into a fight at a bar once. So the setting is, it was my friend John's birthday, and so we went to this bar, and I love this bar. I, this was my favorite bar to go to because they had uh, ice in the urinals. And uh, ladies, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes bars will put ice in the urinals. And I love that. <laughs> because then I can imagine that my penis is a giant laser and I'm, I'm just destroying Eskimo villages from space. <laughs> and oh, this bar is located in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, I used to live in Baltimore. Has anybody ever lived in Baltimore? No? All right. Baltimore is a fucking crazy place. And it encourages a very love-hate relationship with its citizenry. Like, I remember, like, the, I would always, like, the only way I, way I think about Baltimore is I, I think about Baltimore the same way I think about my uh, alcoholic autistic cousin. Like, most of the time, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. And every once in a while, I'm like, that is how many nickels are in that jar. <laughs> Are you magic? You seem magic. You seem mad. I love you, Baltimore. In fact, while I lived there, Kurt Schmoke was elected mayor. And he was elected mayor on a literacy platform because 20% of Baltimore could not read. He gets elected, takes all the money for the literacy program, and builds the Baltimore Ravens football stadium. And then with like the remaining 10 cents left over, just has painted on every bus stop Baltimore, the city that reads. <laughs> but every single one I ever saw had been vandalized to read Baltimore, the city that breeds. But they just put a B in front of reads. <laughs> so they all said Baltimore, the city that breads. <laughs> because they're illiterate. You see, Baltimore writes a joke for itself. <laughs> and that's why you love it so much. So we go to this bar. We go to this bar specifically because we want to dance, because we're tough guys. You know how tough guys like to go out dancing with each other. <laughs> and the DJ is horrible. The DJ is terrible. The DJ's name is DJ Jazze. <laughs> he named himself that? We drink so much, the bar closes down and kicks everybody out onto the street. And so we're all outside waiting uh, just to do nothing. There's nothing else to do. And I don't know why John decided to do this, but he leans over to me and he just goes, hey man, I think DJ Jazze just called you a douchebag. <laughs> and now DJ Jazze was pretty far away. I don't think John could have heard him if he did do that. But at the time I was, uh, I was very drunk and I was also really into spelling. Uh, <laughs> just as a concept. I would just spell everything for fun. It was a real piece of shit. And um, so my response to, to this news is to just start scream spelling douchebag at the top of my lungs. Just D-O-U-C-H-E-B-A-G, D-O-U-S-C-H-E-B-A-G. I don't even know how to spell douchebag, but I'm scream spelling it. Now, why I'm doing that? Agreed is confusing. But why DJ Jazz A chose to take offense at it is still beyond me. But he does, and he approaches me, and he gets in my face, and at this point now I'm still scream spelling douchebag, now I can understand why he's upset. 
And he gets up in there and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have a fight. And then I like, I was like, gotta come up with a plan. <laughs> so my plan is I am going to launch myself through the air and attack his soft middle parts. <laughs> End of plan. I'm still scream spelling douchebag, but I've got a plan. DJ Jazze pushes me. I kind of get off balance a little bit, but I'm like, enact the plan. <laughs> so I jump, I leave the ground, I screaming jump through the air like this. And I don't know if you guys know a lot about fighting, but one rule is keep your feet on the ground. Gives you a place to hit from or run away from. I leave the ground completely, but I'm a little bit off balance when I do, so I just end up just grazing his side, falling to the ground, spraining my wrist, and then taking the skin off my arm from here to here. You can still see the scar, I think, there. And now I'm fucking furious. Because this is my first bar fight, and all of my injuries are self-sustained. <laughs> and I remember having a specific thought on the ground of being like, I don't want my future children to see this moment. It's a weird thought to have, I agree. And why Yvette and Klaus would get in a time machine and come back to that time, and see, I don't have children now, but that's what they're gonna be named like they're Nazis. <laughs> I've already got it planned out. And watch their, their father's humiliating moments. I don't know. But I leap up with that information and I'm screaming now. And in DJ Jazzy Nice's eyes, you can see he's like, oh no, I have engaged with someone who is not well. <laughs> and I grab him in, in what can only be described as like a reverse headlock. Like his head is this way and his butt is this way. And I've just got him comfortably around the middle. And then my first thought is to get him to the phone booth, which is on the corner. It's about 15 feet away. I don't know what my plan was. It's like kick some ass and make some calls. Or I don't know. But I was just like, first thought, best thought. And then I just start slowly waddling him over to this phone booth. And it takes a while. It's long enough for both of us to be like, what is happening? Why are we fighting? I'm wilding him over there, and, and I'm just like, I have to commit people are watching? I, I don't know what, and I think, and this is 2000 in Baltimore, Maryland, so they still have like glass stand-up phone booths. And I maybe thought maybe I was gonna like bash his head into the, into the thing, but he's, his hands are free. So I go to like push him in, and he just opens the door and kind of comes into it, and then I get in behind him and close the door. <laughs> And now, we are in this far too intimate space. And we can't fight anymore because we can't get our, our arms out to like punch each other. And I don't know whose thought it was first, uh, but we both kind of decide that we're gonna, we're gonna headbutt each other. But we just kind of like screw up the timing and we end up just kind of smashing mouths together. <laughs> and so there I am. The light has now come on. I'm in a phone booth with a man who's named himself DJ Jazze. I'm bleeding onto him and it's my first bar fight and I just kissed a dude. <laughs> and then, like I get out and like his friends grab him and my friends grab me. I'm like, that's right, that's right, you get out of here or else, else I'll suck your fucking dick. <laughs> and that's why I don't get into bar fights anymore. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Kurt Braunholer, you guys, uh, that's the episode. Thank you, Kurt, for doing it. Wow, what a tremendously uh, pussyish fight that was. <laughs> I can't.
can't believe anyone would actually brag about that. So last thing I asked you guys to leave us uh, on, as comments, leave your best uh, stripper names. And so we got a bunch of good ones. Next week, I want you guys to leave your best DJ names. DJ Jazze is a good one. That's horrible. Uh, make one up. Or if you actually know one, uh, let us know. Leave it in the comment section. And don't forget to click on the Reddit link. Uh, hit this is not happening. Uh, hashtag follow me on Twitter. And don't forget, subscribe for these. Every Tuesday coming, we're going to have new great ones all the time. See you next Tuesday.